Oh yes, this is the Hardcore Marketing Show. I'm Casey Cheshire, your host for this epic journey. Today's show is sponsored by Ringmaster on a mission to launch B2B podcasts that create relationships, generate revenue, and drive growth. Ringmasterlive.com. Bam. Oh my goodness, there's so much that's about to happen. You know the drill. The train has left the station. The roller coaster cannot go backwards. It must go forward. I'm excited. This is going to be a fun episode. And I'm standing up on a crazy yoga board, trying to balance myself while having this interview. And I can't wait to show you who I'm talking to. He is amazing. Let me tell you a little more about him. He is a team-focused leader, an entrepreneur, super innovative, customer-focused, results-driven marketing executive. And he's got experience in startups automation, growth, board chair at Cascadia Technical Academy, fractional chief marketing officer to the stars to many growing companies like the Canine Resorts Luxury Pet Hotel, Dave Blanchard. Welcome to the show. Hey, good to be here. Oh man, I almost lost myself in the introduction. There's so much going on. You're a busy guy. Yeah, exactly. So I'm going to pass you this thing. It's heavy, but I know you got this. So here we go. Ugh, okay. Here you go. You want to grab that? Okay. Thor's hammer? Yeah. All right. Here we go. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Take for me Thor's hammer and smash some kind of marketing myth, bogus strategy, misconception. Set the record straight once and for all. Yeah. So, so this one I hear a lot, which is marketing is too expensive. Um, mm. And, you know, you, sometimes you hear it, sometimes you don't hear it, but you, but the silence is what you hear, which is businesses aren't doing marketing because they don't, they think it's too expensive. It's not for them. Um, and there is some truth to this. You can waste a ton of money on marketing. There's the, one of my real pet peeves is, you know, there are a lot of us out there in the marketing industry that are willing to help, uh, you know, help businesses, but a lot of, a lot of, some of them take their money and don't help much. And so they get a nice, pretty website and it doesn't generate any business for them. Um, or, uh, you know, I recently was talking to, I actually ha had a client at one point um, and talking to somebody else who had the same problem recently where their, their agency was running Google ads for them and they weren't making any money off of them. And so they were spending twelve, eighteen thousand dollars $18,000 a month and not getting- A month? A month. And That's, nothing was happening. Nothing. They were getting no. We're, we're getting any sales, and with that, with one of my clients, they actually didn't know they were getting any sales from it because the the agency was kind of tracking. Here's how many leads we're generating, but those leads weren't turning into sales. And and when we I, I recognized that, we're like, well, we got to turn this around. So so there is truth. You can waste money on marketing. However. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the real travesty is that companies um, limit their growth because they shy away from investing in marketing. And I say investing because um, the truth is that marketing done right is an investment with a high multiple return. Mm. Um, so, yeah. So, done right, it's an investment. Did you say with a measurable return? With a high, high multiple return. High multiple return. So where does this come from? Why do people think it's too expensive? Well, it is, it does, there is a cost and it's, mm. it, it's, and it is expensive uh, in the sense that, um, you know, what you're really trying to do in marketing uh, is get it, get somebody's attention. And you think about what are all the things that are trying to get our attention these days? I mean, it's right. like it, the number it's endless and and it's there's more and more noise all the time and people are creating all kinds of content and you know things to get our attention and there's 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 you know there's tiktok and there's youtube and there's all kind you know stuff online there's stuff yeah. online i mean there's there our lives are calling for our attention our businesses are calling for our attention so in order for get somebody's get somebody's attention you got you got to pay something for that you got to give something for that. So it, it's not, you know, what we're trying to do here is not, is not cheap. Um, but the, uh, but the other reason why people say that, that is so, so they look at the expense and they're like, well, I can't afford to do that. But, but they're looking at it with a mindset of a cost 
and not the mindset of an investment. So, you know, the difference is if, you know, if I say uh, with a, for a person with a cost mindset, I say, I'll give you, if you give me a dollar, I'll give you two. He says, I don't have a dollar. The person with, with right. an investment mindset, you say, I'll, if you give me a dollar, I'll give you two. He says, I got all the dollars you want <laughs> for every, if you can give me two back for, for right. For right. If you can actually show that. Yeah. yeah. So that's the, that, that's really the difference. And it, it's, a, it's an important mind shift to, to make um, rather than looking at it in, as, as a cost um, and like an accountant would it really marketing is really one of the few things on the, on the income statement that is, is actually an investment that has a return. And it, and it, right. I think so many people put it in the cost center because they're not expecting it or holding it accountable to. A yeah, return. exactly. But yeah. we're saying, no, 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 it's definitely not a cost center. It, and you, sh you should expect an ROI. And if that ROI is zero, it isn't working. It isn't working and you should be managing it. So you're getting a yeah. positive return on it. And that should be the, the goal from the outset of, of, of uh, is, is setting things up so that you get a positive yeah. return. So, and I can talk a little bit more about how do you do that? <laughs> yeah. I was just going to say like, well, how do we do this? So people that are listening saying, okay, well, that sounds, that sounds great. How do I transition into, out of being a cost center into being an investment center? Yeah. So I've got a few tips here that I'll, I'll share it. You know, this, this, this isn't, uh, this won't answer all the questions, but it'll get people kind of started in the right direction. Um, first, I'd say strategy first. Um, you know, a lot of people have read The Art of War by Sun Tzu. It was written 2,500 years ago. He was a Chinese yeah. military strategist. And he said, this quote I love, it says, strategy without tactics is the slowest route to victory. Tactics without strategy is the noise before defeat. Wow. Okay. Strategy without tactics is the slowest route. And then what was the other one? Tactics without strategy is the noise before defeat. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. So a lot of, a lot of businesses just, they do marketing tactics. They let's try Facebook. Let's try a webinar. Let's try this. Oh, that didn't work. Direct mail. Oh, that doesn't work. They try stuff. It's tactics. There's no strategy behind it. And it's the noise before defeat. They, the, the money goes out, they don't get anything back. It's too, it's too expensive. It's too expensive. They end up back in that mindset. Um, obviously you need tactics. And that's the other part of the quote is strategy, you know, strategy without tactics is the slowest route to victory. You need to have tactics, but, but strategy. And the, the other way I like to think about it is um, the difference between a light bulb and a laser. So you can put, you can have a hundred watt laser, you can have a hundred watt light bulb. The light bulb will sends light off in all different directions. It's a good thing. Lights up a room. A laser will cut steel. <laughs> so, because when, why, what's the difference? Well, the light is all pointed in the same direction. It's all coordinated. It's cohesive. Mm. And by focusing all that light uh, in one direction, you can actually move, you know, you, you move things with it and make a difference. So, so that's to me the, the kind of the diff, the the, um, the difference that strategy makes. But what strategy? That's one of those words that gets thrown around a lot. It's like, well, what does that mean? Um, right. So we could probably do a whole podcast on what strategy, but just kind of quickly, the probably one of the most important things is to choose one wildly important marketing goal. So one thing that becomes marketing singular focus. It's usually a two year goal. At least you want to think at, think far out. What is what is um, what do we want to accomplish? What do we want marketing to accomplish for the organization over the next two years? And a, okay. a good example like that. of that was um, you know for canine luxury pet pet hotels, um, uh, our two year goal was to reduce the break even time for a new resort, their franchise. And and if you think of a franchise business, you're selling a business. Well, if you can make that business. And this is a million dollar investment at least. Yeah. You can make that investment return, start to pay back sooner. What's the value of that investment? It goes up, right? So, so oh, the, the point of marketing was to reduce that break even time. And we, 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 we've now got it to where they're cash flowing within a month or two, um, positive cash flow within a month or two. In fact, we just had an opening um, last week and they've, they've, they've gotten, you know, about thirty or forty thousand dollars in the door before they even open their doors. 
So um, that's the that's an example of a wildly important marketing goal. And you can see how that kind of laser focuses everything that you're doing in marketing. Um, second thing is define your customer. So um, you really need to know what motivates them. How do they make a choice? Why do they choose you? Um, and this is where some research is, is, is important um, to really gain some insight into what's triggering them to start looking for a product or services, service like yours. How do you stack up with the competition in their mind? What are the steps to a sale? What are they, what are they evaluating? Why did they make the decision? What does success look like? So th some of those questions are, are important insights to gain um, from your customer because that's what they want you to talk to them about. They don't want you to talk about features or who we are or why we're great. They want you to talk about their problem and, you know, help them, uh, you know, choose you versus other, other, um, other alternatives. So that insight is really critical. And then following on the heels of that is knowing what makes you unique in the mind of the customer, not what you think makes you unique, but what makes you unique in the mind of the customer. And, um, and uh, they will tell you if you ask why they why they purchased you, why they chose your product or service, and uh, and and then that's really a key cornerstone of building your your marketing communications around that. And a lot of businesses are not really well differentiated. Oh, I've got great customer service. Oh, I, you know, well, what does that mean? What does great customer service really mean? Um, uh, or, you know, what you don't want to be is the low price competitor. <laughs> unless you're Walmart, because that's a race to the bottom. And unless you have an amazing scale, it's, it's, it's a game you can't really win. So you need to find the thing that's going to, that stands out about you and uh, that, that that's going to make your customer uh, choose you. Um, another part of strategy is deciding how does sales and marketing fit together? Um, you know, how does sale, how does marketing fuel the sales operation or the sales motion? Um, so those are just a, a couple of key points about strategy and, and, and getting clarity on some of those questions is really going to help make those, make the, um, the marketing tactics more effective. Then you need to agree on success metrics. Um, what do you measure? How do you measure it? What's a, create a scorecard for tracking everything weekly so you can make sure that things are on, are on track. This is um, really important um, in dealing with marketing agencies um, because, um, in fact, you and I were talking the other day about, uh, 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 accountant, I was just recently talking with it. She's got a client who's, uh, you know, who's telling the client, Hey, the phone's not ringing or telling their agency, the phone's not ringing. The agency's, well, we've got these Google ads running and it tells us that, you know, the, the dashboard tells us that we're sending, you know, we're, it's working. And they're like, well, it's not working. I don't make any phone calls. And so you need to, you need, it's, it's really important working with an agency to figure out, well, how are we going to measure success? What is the success of this at campaign? Is it, is it phone calls? And then what, what leads to the phone calls? How do we get there? How do we measure it? So that we're all on the same page so we can agree that this is working or it's not, and we can go after it if it's not. Um, and then creating accountability for deliver deliverables, timelines, budgets, and results, and then check checking progress weekly, and then being transparent. You need to, we need to set expectations as leaders with either internal or external resources. Give generous praise for good performance where it's necessary. Have those hard conversations, and and if you have to, make a change. So those are some uh, those are some things that will help. Uh, turn in uh, marketing from a cost center to uh, uh, an investment with a high return. Mm. Love that. Love that. Have you written a book? No. I you haven't. need a book. You Maybe need to I write should. it. It needs to be written. <laughs> yeah. I should do that. So question for you then. You, you have clearly aggregated experience and knowledge. Are there any books you've read lately that you recommend? Yeah, the, I, I, there are some that I, are on my uh, recent reading list. Um, they're not all marketing related, but um, a lot of them are business related. Some of them are, are more citizenship related. But um, w one of them that I really like was is called Change Your Questions, Change Your Life by Marilee Adams. 
And it's all about, and kind of if I were to boil it down, we go through life where, where our mind is in one of two states. It's either in a critical state or it's in a creative state. We're either judging, criticizing, or we're coming up with new ideas, solutions, mm -hmm. things like that. And so she offers some really practical tools for get, for recognizing when you're in that critical state and then shifting yourself back into the creative state. And uh, it, it can be a real game changer. Um, What's it called? Change your again? questions, change your life. is pr It's a pretty ambitious yeah. title, but it's really, <laughs> it's 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 powerful stuff. Love that. Um, about the future. Well, are there some things in the future that you're excited about? Maybe in the, in the changes that are happening in marketing or in the world. Yeah, you know, I I'm really excited about the new ways that we have learned to work. I I think uh, if it, you know, and, and COVID really kind of accelerated that. I one of the agencies I work with. Um, you know, they stopped coming into the office for COVID and they're not going back They're They've just decided work from home. And, uh, you know, people are starting to realize that it's, it's more productive. You're not commuting two hours a day and spending time away from your family in the car. You're not putting pollutants in the atmosphere. I mean, it's just kind of better all around. So obviously it doesn't apply to every job. But um, there's a lot more flexibility in how we can work. And uh, and I think that lends itself to um, finding work where you can stay in your creative genius um, and um, achieve a lot more satisfaction. Um, so I, I see, you know, work in the future being more like a, a movie production company than a big corporate structure kind of thing. Um, if you look at a, you know, if you ever looked at the credits of the movie, there's like 300 people listed. <laughs> it's like, and these are people that sort of come together for a project and they disperse to wherever to another project and they're constantly right. coming and going. So I think that's, that's the new way of work. And I think it's, it's, it's more humane. It's more attuned to who we are as people in a way it's kind of back to the future. We used to, you know, we used to be in our log cabins, making chairs for each other, you know, and, right. and, uh, and, and so now we can have to kind of go back to that craftsman kind of model which wow. is i think is exciting you know the idea of it being a movie production company is, is fascinating especially as we think about podcasts yeah and other and other content type productions i mean red bull are they a tv channel are they an entertainment company or do they sell a drink like uh, yeah. yes is the answer yes well you know it's interesting you bring that up i i uh, recently went to a webinar from a company that basically has set up an internal um media company in order to create content for themselves and they've organized it they've got journalists i mean they don't call them necessarily call them this but they've got people that are on different they're doing uh, focusing on different things like you would in a newspaper and this is actually not new i'm i'm a i'm a train buff and and back in the late 1800s the, the railroad, Southern Pacific Railroad, created a magazine called Sunset Magazine. You may have heard of Sunset Magazine, but what it was originally was an idea for promoting lifestyles, the lifestyle of the, the Western lifestyle, and having people get on a train and either visit or move west. And that, so they, they actually created a magazine to promote the trains. It became a magazine, literally became a magazine, and, and uh, I think it was recently sold. Um, when magazines kind of started being not, not a great thing to be in, but, um, but yeah, it lasted for hundreds of years. So it's not a new concept, but, um, but it's, it's, it's really taken off recently with all the different ways that we can publish ourselves now. Jeez. It, it, it's bringing expression to the company, the corporate face isn't the, you know, an anonymous icon or an egg on Twitter. It's a real person. And, the idea of the evangelist and production. It, I, I like where it's going. Yeah. And you have a, a real connection, like you say, with people. And, yeah. And uh, I think that's really where I think we're all looking for authentic relationships. Um, you know, we've had enough of that. <laughs> anonymous. <laughs> yeah. yeah anonymous exactly. I'm all about the connection promises. for sure. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, even above content. Um, well, my next question really about the connection, about the person is you. Who are you? Can you take me back in time? Little you days. Did you always know you're going to be CMO to the stars, an executive, that kind of thing? Take me back, like little Dave yeah. growing up. I, um, well, I always had kind of an interest in business. Um, and uh, 
I guess I can, you know, to be honest, I had an interest in money. I thought money is a really cool thing. If you get money, you can buy stuff that you want. And so, um, you know, as well, how do you make money? Well, money business is how you make money. And so, you know, back when I had my little piggy bank, you know, and I'd put my dollars in there and I'd mow the lawn and get some more dollars and uh, the neighbors or whatever, um, you know, that was always kind of an interesting, intriguing thing to me. So, so I kind of had this early idea of I wanted, wanted to be in business. Um, I, um, I had a couple of, you know, early jobs, which were not the kind of thing I wanted to do. I was a, I worked in a warehouse. It was the most boring thing I've ever done. Oh, <laughs> so, uh, putting price tags on clothes and, um, you know, so you get this big stack in and you put a price, you know, it's just assembly line stuff. And, um, so I learned early that wasn't really what I wanted to do, but I really wanted to work more with my mind. Um, and, um, fast forward to, um, you know, it comes time to graduate from, from college and I'm, I'm talking to a recruiter from, uh, Hewlett Packard. And, uh, I was saying, you know, I was interested in business. I'm interested in engineering. I have a degree in engineering. And he's like, well, have you ever considered marketing? And I'm like, what's marketing? And so he explained it. And I thought, well, I'll give that a try for a summer and see what it's like. And it turned out that it's marketing is a really good place in an organization to get a good broad view of the business because the marketing kind of touches all the different, touches production and development and finance. And so um, that's that's how I got my start. And then I I was with HP for 26 years in number 26 years. years. Yeah, that was my first career. And it was a really great place i mean it really had an iconic environment for the for high high trust of employees and and excellence um you know you didn't last long at hp if you didn't do things with a with a certain level of excellence and um yeah. so so i learned a lot sort of breathing the air there and then um came time when i wanted to kind of go out on my own i still i had that entrepreneur itch all along totally. and uh it's like time to scratch that and i we were doing a, uh, I was involved in a project. We were looking at how we could use software to help small businesses with their marketing. And uh, I did some research, talked to about a hundred small business owners about their marketing challenges and, and came away with the realization that one, marketing is kind of challenging for hard small businesses because they don't, they didn't get into business because they like marketing. They get into business because they like making pies or yeah. whatever. And then there's this, then they realize, oh, if I just open my or my doors, they don't just show up. I have to do some marketing, and they didn't really understand it very well. And um, and so uh, and then technology was changing the way that marketing was done radically. I mean, you used to be able to take out a yellow page ad. Remember yellow pages? I remember that. Um, yeah. And uh, and you you could get the phone to ring. Well, that doesn't work anymore. So there's all this technology. You have to learn to do it. I have a technology background. I thought, well, I could help. So. So I helped, you know, the next 10 years or so, I helped over 300 small businesses automate their marketing. Jeez. And, uh, and then uh, in the course of doing that, I, 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 I came across, across an opportunity to uh, be the first marketing uh, person in a startup company that was revolutionizing how we heat and cool buildings much more efficiently. And so I did all their initial website and their... Uh, their uh, sales collateral and put together a trade show that worked really well and really successfully. And I was doing it on a part-time basis, which gave me the flexibility to do what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. And uh, so I liked that model. And so I decided to pursue being a fractional chief marketing officer. And that's brings me up to today. Man. And so tell me about the companies you work with today. Who would be the ideal client for you? Someone listening to the show right now. Um, yeah. What's a good fellow? Well, there, a good fit for me is a, a business that's between five and fifty million in revenue and has some real uh, ambitious growth goals. Um, the reason I say five to fifty is because up to five, you're kind of sorting out what are our products, who are our customers, that kind of thing. Um, once you've got sort of that sort of built, then it's time to take that all to the next level and really optimize and scale it. Yeah. Over fifty, you can you can afford a full-time person in my, in, in my position. And, uh, so 
by offering marketing leadership and managing the marketing function at a fraction of the cost of a full-time executive, mm -hmm. I can make that expertise available for a company that's not not really big enough. So it's, it fills that that gap um, that, that that a lot of companies have, and um, so they're either looking to scale or pivot or perhaps exit the business. And those are those are inflection points that really mm -hmm. require some marketing strategy. If if you know if you're on cruise control and things are great and you don't want to grow a whole lot, you really don't need a lot of marketing strategy. Um, but if you're really you know wanting to grow or expand or change direction, then that's when you really need to you know put in place some of those things I was talking about earlier. Such a needed thing. I mean, what a breakthrough! The idea of a fractional CMO for those companies that can't afford that expertise and you have the benefit to the marketing manager listening. You're the sole marketer at a company and you've been asked to do tactics and strategy and win the war and all these things. Um, it actually just really isn't fair to expect all of those things from you. So to be able to bring in, you know, CMO like yourself to match with, you know, really hardworking marketing manager. It's just like a brilliant combo or combo. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it, re it re relieves a lot of the burden from the business owner, you know, who, who maybe, maybe they, don't, they don't have a marketing manager or maybe they have a, a marketing manager who's doing a lot of tactics. Um, but, uh, and so, you know, somebody like me can come in and really put the strategy behind it and yeah. put the, the rocket fuel to it. Yeah. Yeah. Rocket fuel. That's a perfect way of describing it. Um, well, one quick question for you. It's a bit of a hypothetical because, yes. see, I may or may not have a time machine here in Nashua, New Hampshire. And let's say you come visit, right? We get some beers, some lobster. You get a chance to use this time machine, but it's a particular kind of time machine. And you go back in time and you get to see yourself a few days after that undergrad graduation. You get to talk to yourself. What kind of things would you say? Would you give yourself recommendations, advice? What would you say? Yeah, I would say um, I I would say start the entrepreneuring journey journey sooner. Mm. Uh, I you know I spent 26 years in a corporate environment. It was you know good in a lot of ways, um, but then you know I was sort of mid to late career when I had to learn the entrepreneuring thing, and I I, th I think it would have been uh, I I think I would have gotten a lot farther if I'd started sooner. So yeah, I might not have uh, you know stayed in that uh environment as long as i did if you know not kind of knowing what i knew what i knew now not that it was bad but but i think i could have gotten you know um to a better place sooner if mm -hmm. i started sooner oh for sure and i guess the next question to that is would you listen to yourself <laughs> <laughs> i don't know that's a good that's a really good question i uh <laughs> I do like stability, and that's one of the things that the corporate culture gives you is stability. And yeah. um, and 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 maybe life worked out like it should have because I, you know, fortunately, I, I when I I was able to you know put some resources aside that could sustain me as I launched my entrepreneurial journey, which wouldn't have been there if I'd just been fresh out of school. But right, so. Um, I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> I'd have to kick myself in the butt a little bit. EBD, right? To be just yeah. Yeah, yeah, figuring out how to talk to yourself. That's probably the real challenge right there. Yeah. Yeah. Listen up, guy. Psh, psh, psh. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe enjoy the future. Well, maybe, you know, if I can borrow your time machine, then I can, you know, show them around and see what they Yeah. <laughs> Check this out. Well, there's only seat for uh, one. And I, <laughs> I'm driving the little, the pedals at the top and then you're in the passenger seat and. <laughs> yeah. So he, you can only just describe it to him. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so good, man. Well, you know, Hey, tell me, we were talking a little bit about some of the things you do on the side, just for, for fun. We uh, talk a little bit about strategy and theater, but theater is still a real big part of your life right now. Um, or no, theater, not so much. It's, uh, not so I, much. I, you know, I, were you I, just I, in a musical? Well, oh, we, we've tried to have this podcast for a while, but did, weren't yeah. you? Were, it's been a while. Like it's been a while. I was oh, wow. uh, it, the community theater. I was, we did guys and dolls um, and it was a lot of fun and I was the lead. Um, and uh, Heck yeah. but it's, yeah, it's, I, I, I haven't done it recently though. <laughs> Maybe this is the universe telling you. Maybe that's it. I need it. to write a book and I need to go, go to get involved in theater. Again. Write a play while you're at it. There we go. That's it. 
Well, um, Dave, where can people get in touch with you? They're interested in just connecting professionally or they're looking for a fractional CMO. What's the best way to reach out? Well, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, just look up Dave Blanchard. Um, uh, and, uh, I, or you can email me at Dave at your CMO.com, Y O R C M O.com. And, um, that's a great way to get a hold of me. Awesome. Well, we will put, and by the way, if you, if people have yeah, questions ahead. about marketing, I, I, I'm happy to, to, um, share my experience on a, on a call and oh, great. Um, help people sort things out. So, um, oh, that's fantastic. I'm sure there's a bunch of people who'd love to take you up on that. Yeah. We're all constantly learning here. So, I mean, it's just a you know, one step closer to that, that next step where we get that ROI. Um, and I just want to say thank you so much for coming on here. Uh, man, quoting Sun Tzu, you know, dropping some knowledge here about how you can waste money and, and to, to shift it from that cost center to an investment center. Um, this has been brilliant. I really appreciate you coming on here. Well, I've had a lot of fun. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Absolutely. And for those listening, if you've learned something, and I freaking know you have, because I literally have two pages of notes over here, front and back, then share this episode with someone else. One person, nine people, 3,000 people. That's thought leadership, getting good information into other people's hands. Uh, do that and share this knowledge with everyone else. And if someone is struggling in their marketing strategy, now you know who to point them to. So anyhow, Dave, thanks again for being on here. Thank you. All right, everyone, this has been another exciting episode of the Hardcore Marketing Show. We will catch you all next time.